We're going to look at how to improve our games and make it longer by adding more levels. So we're going to think about how we can trigger us activating going over to the new level and then what's involved in how you actually change from level one to level two in your game. In our example, we're going to have our character change to the next level when they reach the staircase. And so that is a kind of overlap. We have overlaps for sprites, for when our projectiles hit our sprites, for when they hit us. And we also have overlaps for when sprites are touching or on top of particular tiles. That is in scene. Scroll down, tiles, this event here. On sprite of kind, player, overlaps tile at location. This is the event that's going to read when we step onto our staircase and then inside this event we can put some code for how to change our level. And what we're going to do is we're going to bundle all of that code for changing our level into what's called a function, which you can think of as making your own blocks. And then we want to call that block that we've made every time we want to change a level. And that's going to make our code cleaner, but it's also going to stop us from needing to duplicate the same code over and over and over again. So let's first have a look at a function. Click on advanced and then functions. And we're greeted with a category here that looks like our variables where all we really can do is make a new one. Let's make one. And when we think about changing a level, we want to think about what's involved. And there's actually two steps. So we're going to make two functions. And the first step to changing a level is you need to clear all of the things that are on the level that you've just finished. So if there's any coins that you've missed, or if there's any enemies that you haven't defeated, we need to make sure that they've been removed so that they're not hanging around on our second level. So our first function, we're going to call that clear level. And the purpose of this function, or the function that all of this code in here serves, is going to be just a clear level. We're going to go through all of our sprites and destroy them one by one. So we're going to use a loop and we're going to look for all of the sprites on our previous level. So loops for element value of list. This is going to loop over a list of all of the sprites of a particular kind. And a nice handy tip for that is advanced arrays, scroll all the way down to the bottom and this block here is how you set a variable to be an array of a particular kind of sprite. We're going to take what we want from this block, we're going to click, hold and drag just on the array bubble and replace our list bubble with it. And this makes it look through an array of all of the sprites of kind, we're going to change it to enemy. And drag that over into the bin. We'll clean up our workspace a little. And now we have a loop that goes over every enemy. And we don't want the enemies to magically appear on level 2, so we're going to destroy them. Sprites destroy value. And then what would happen here is you need to think about what sprites are in my level. This example only has enemies, but yours might have coins and food, magic scrolls, ammo, anything that you've designed. So we can duplicate this, put it underneath, and now change what type of sprite we're looking for. This particular game doesn't have any food sprites, but the purpose of our clear level function is to go through every single type 
of Sprite that we need to get rid of and destroy them. So now that we've built this function, let's have a look at how it works. Functions. We have now one called call clear level. And we're going to put that inside our overlap. Functions. Call our clear level function when our sprite of kind player overlaps our staircase. So if we move over onto our staircase, they all disappear. Now that we've built our clear level function, let's build a function that creates our level. We're going to go functions, like before, make a function. We'll give this one a suitable name that tells us what it is that it's doing. Create level, we will call it. And when we make a game in Make Code Arcade and we don't state that we've got multiple levels, it's almost like we've only got the one level. So a lot of what we do when we create a level is already found in our OnStart. So when we look at our OnStart, we're setting the tile map for our one level. We're giving it some rules for what to do with those tiles. We can pull them out of OnStart and put them into our create level function and then tell our game to create level one when the game starts. Let's do that now. We're going to be using this piece of code here, putting the ghosts on a certain tile. We're going to be using this block of code here, placing the princess on a certain tile. We're also going to be using the tile map. Let's just drag these ones over and find the best spot to place them. Let's have a look here. So we're creating our level and we're setting our tile map. We're placing our princess on top of this particular tile and we're placing our ghosts on this particular tile based on this tile map here. If we call our function or run the code that's inside that function, click on functions, call create level, and then put that back into on start, it's going to see that we're on level one and we're going to create the level. Level one. What if we have more than one level? Well, if, logic, if, our tile map, sorry, if our level is equal to one, so we're going to compare these two numbers, if level is equal to one, then the tile map is going to be the tile map for the first level. But we're here to make and design more than one level and then move up levels once we reach the end of our level. So if we go plus here, we'll go plus again to give us another specific if statement. We can remove the extra else. Let's duplicate this here, hover our mouse over it, and the part that's highlighted in white is going to get duplicated. We're going to put that in here. What happens if our level equals two? Well, we're going to start creating our second level, which means we have to actually design it first. So I'm just going to quickly draw up a second level and then we'll come back and have a look at applying that to our code. So I've just built level two here and I can actually build as many levels as I like. I've just got to keep adding to my if statement and I've just got to then keep adding more tile maps. So this would say if level equals three, we can go scene, new tile map, and then I draw my third level. If I wanted 10 levels, well then I just have 10 if statements here with 
the design for all 10 of my levels corresponding to the right number. What we need to make sure when we design our levels though is that we use the right blocks. So in my second level, I've made sure that I've got a little teleport pad and I've got a staircase so that I can enter the level and that I can exit the level. I'm also using the same stone tiles that place our ghosts. So other than the layout of the level, everything else is the same. So when we run create level, it follows the same rules. When I move throughout my level one and I go to end my level, I would expect now for it to shift over to level two. But if I walk around, we can see all of the sprites have been cleared. So we're halfway there. We've cleared the level that we're on, but we haven't told it to create the new level. And that's just as simple as finding our clear level function, making sure that we've got our loops in here to clear all of our sprites, double checking that it is going to change our level by one. So if we're on level one, it goes to two. If we're on level five, it goes to level six. Once we clear our level, it's very important that immediately we create our new level. So we're going to click on functions and we're going to call create level as the very last thing we do when we clear our level. And now let's have a look at what happens. I'm going to walk over, stand on the staircase and it's going to clear the level. At the very end of clear level, it's then going to build the level and then I flick over onto the new level. So one more time, as soon as I overlap this particular tile, I'm calling the clear level function. The very last thing that happens once I've finished clearing the level is that it will then create the next level. Moving over on, it activates the overlap which activates our code. We don't have to duplicate this 10 times if we've got 10 levels. We just need to tell it that once we trigger the next level, we can run our clear level function and our functions will take care of the rest. We have here very specific if statements for what level we're on and to do that, we've been removing this else because it feels like we don't actually need it. Well, if we've completed every single level, then we've won. So we can go game, game over, flick it to win. And in this very simple game, I've only got two levels. Level is equal to one at the moment. I go and I clear my level. Level is now equal to two. If I go now and end this level, and level is equal to three, well, three isn't on this list. It's something else. And that means that we've finished every level, and game over, we win.